across the fence, we're welcoming the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association. We'll be learning about the food, the fiber that comes from our working landscape, and about the farmers who work the land as producers of meat, dairy, and all of those ex exquisite natural fiber products. Good afternoon, I'm Will Michael, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm gonna welcome two guests this afternoon, starting with the president of the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association. Dave Martin and his wife run Settlement Farm in Underhill. The Martins currently have about 60 sheep and they market their lamb and wool. Joining Dave is Melissa Purley from Berlin. Melissa and her husband run Too Few Farm. The Purleys are professional musicians who decided a few years ago to do more with their land than just mow it. So they started the farm homestead with wool bred sheep and they now sell a variety of wool products. Two different farms, both part of the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association. I want to thank both of you, uh, th Dave and Melissa. Thank you th for coming with us this afternoon. Mm. Thanks so much for having yeah, us. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Dave, I'm going to start with you to uh, give us a brief overview and some history of the Sheep and Goat Association. Yeah, yeah the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association has been around for well over 100 years because the, the sheep industry ha in Vermont has existed for well over 100 years. We uh, offer a, a lot of support and information for our members. Our members r range from uh, folks who have two animals uh, with names to larger producers who yeah, just have ear tags on their animals. And we try to meet all their needs and they, uh, no matter what your scale is, you're welcome to join. And you're describing our friends and neighbors because we all know someone, whether they are a little larger scale or small scale. And as you're pointing out, sheep once dominated agriculture in Vermont during the 20th century. It was cow dairy that really became the dominant part of Vermont agriculture, and it remains king today. So how are things changing? Because they are definitely changing. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, a lot, like you said, dairy is still by far the, the largest agricultural sector in, in Vermont. But early in the 19th century, sheep were, were a, a major uh, agricultural sector, and I just, in the 1839 agricultural census in Vermont, Underhill had 3,300 sheep and hardly any dairy cows. Um, well, that's just in one, at, that's just one community. That's just in one community, but it was the same throughout Vermont. Yeah. Uh, raising sheep for wool was a major economic ac ac activity. And then um, society and we changed. See, we have the woolen mills still that people know about, the, the, the and the textiles it, and fibers. In, in, in Winooski, and that it just changed. And gradually, uh, because of changes in the economy, in the world economy, and the West opening up, uh, wool was no longer uh, viable in Vermont. But, but dairy took, took over. In 1947, there were 11,000 dairy farms in Vermont. Uh, currently, there are around 500. Uh, dairy farms in Vermont. And uh, just to be to clarify that or to add to that, sometimes people think that agriculture is leaving. It's being some of that space and land is being filled by by small scale agriculture, by fruit and vegetable yeah. and other yeah. pieces. Yeah. Uh, uh, give us some insight into your farm, which again, given what you've just been talking about, it's not surprising has its has its back uh, has its roots in dairy. Yeah. Well, if you, if you look at a picture of, of my farm, you can you it, it serves as a good example of how dairying in, ev evolved in Vermont. Uh, and there's a picture you brought to share yeah. with us. Uh, on, the, on the right is the original old part of the barn. Uh, and uh, it was built not to be a pretty picture. It was built based on the technology available to the farmer at the time to, uh, to raise animals. And, and you can see at one point they added on to the barn and then in 1956, they added on to the barn again. Uh, and again, an example of how the farmers are constantly changing, trying to uh, be more efficient, trying to earn money, uh, trying to support their families. And I think you, my barn is a perfect example of, of that. Uh, well, with that, I'm gonna bring Melissa Purley into our conversation. Uh, you haven't always been a sheep farmer, so how did that come to be? Well, I am actually from nine generations of Vermont farmers. And interestingly enough, on our land, I have uh, sheep fencing and gates and uh, remnants of the past. And so it, to me, it's almost like ancestral memory to come back to this. And my husband and I, I was, it would be, this is our sixth year of farming and about five years before that, I was doing some sheepdog trialing. 
and my husband and I said, you know, it would be great to do this. I would love, I was spending a lot of time with farmers and in their pens, and I said, I would love to do this on our land. And we just decided that we'd like to make the land leave it better than when we found it and make products that were purposeful and useful to people. And so we took what we were already homesteading and added the farm to it. So here you are five or six years later. What yep. does what does too few farm in Berlin look like today? You know, um, wonderfully, it looks like the dream that we had. We built every farm building ourselves. So we built the barn and faced it south so it wouldn't get the north wind. We encased our chicken coops in hardware cloth so they'd be as predator proof as possible. We rotationally graze so we're constantly moving fences. We pull a shed around so the sheep have shade and inclement weather and things. And so. Now it's producing and it looks like we dreamed it would look. I mean, bring us to a, 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 one of the main reasons I wanted to have you with us today is that you and your husband, Paul, you're professional musicians. Yes. This is not something that, the farm is not something that's getting, as I understand it, 80 or 100 hours a, a, a week of your time. So how are you able to make a small scale farm financially viable? Well, I think the important thing, and I think Dave will agree with me, is that small scale agriculture most of the time is done by people who have other jobs. I, I think Dave had another job, you know, I'm I know so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's done by people who have other jobs as well. My grandfather uh, worked in a dairy all day and would come home and do his work. So we, we're not really that far from the model when you're working small scale, but we're able to, we, our main product are wool blankets. We also sell eggs, we have honey bees, so we sell our honey. And what we do is uh, we sell out of our blankets pretty much every season. So we put a lot of effort into making people know what we do and really what we think is they're, they're kind of buying the farm and that's what small scale agriculture sells. It sells itself. We're gonna be giving the website for the Sheep and Goat Association so people can go online where they can find uh, exquisite products, uh, uh, the meats. So we'll come to that at the end and I know Dave is gonna echo that. But you, I wanna follow up just a little bit on, yeah. you, you produce a podcast as part of the Sheep and Goat yes. Association. It's called Why Wool? Right. So let me ask you, why wool? Well, the other piece of why we're here today is because the Sheep and Goat Association wants people to know that wool is still there. It's been replaced by synthetic products, but it's still the best on the market. Our wool blankets, as an example, are made from uh, worsted weight wool. They last a lifetime. And what can you say, what products can you say will last you a lifetime? They will be something that you can pass down for generations in your family. And it's the best kind of weight. Uh, it's the best kind of warmth. And it protects you in a way that other products don't. And we're basically just saying, accept the fact that that might be a little more costly to have a small scale operation make these things for you but it's well worth it because you'll have a product that you'll have for your life. Dave, what are the financial expectations or realities for small scale farming in particular, or for wool in particular, yeah. I meant to ask? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's important to understand that uh, shepherds in Vermont produce some fairly decent fiber. Uh, the the wool, wool, wool is a wonderful, wonderful natural product with a lot of great characteristics. And we have some small mills in Vermont that are able to turn that those fleeces into uh, a really pretty pretty nice yarn, uh, and that yarn gets uh, made into great sweaters and, uh, and other products. And I, I think it's important for uh, the public to understand uh, that wool is a great resource. Uh, it's, it's it's natural, and it, it, any dollar that you spend on a Vermont product stays in Vermont. And, you, and you took the words right out of my and, mouth. And you. keeps the land open, mm -hmm. uh, keeps the barns standing and not you know, falling into disrepair. So that there's, there's, a, there's a lot of benefits. And, and I, I think one of the goals of the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association is to help the public understand that Vermont wool is, is a great product. And they should really reach out uh, and, and look for opportunities to, to buy our product. This is really, again, that thing that Channel 3 has talked about for many years, buy Vermont first. Right. It is a way to keep our economy going. It's a way to keep our open land. This is not just a slogan, you're living it. So what does that farming piece look like uh, for both of you, but mm -hmm. particularly, uh, again, you and Paul, professional musicians, what mm -hmm. does it look like when you have many other things in your life? Busy. <laughs> it looks busy. In a word, busy. But I'll tell you something. Um, instead of seeing the work as something that is difficult, <clears throat> and, and it is, 
you know, I don't think it's you can lie about it. It's difficult work. We're out there sometimes at 10 o'clock checking animals, you know, things like that. But at the same time, it's purposeful. And to be honest with you, in this world where there are things that are being taken over by artificial means, people taking jobs, things like that, this is something that your hands are on it. Our hands are on our product from the time they begin to the time they go to you. And how many things can you say that about? And so for me, it's very purposeful to do this work. And I feel like I'm like I said, ancestral memory and connected back to something deeper than myself. And that's why I do it. Div, I'm gonna to come to you for a quick last question, a piece of advice maybe for someone who's looking to get into beginning farming. Uh, what, what would you tell them? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, it's exciting to think about agriculture and a lot of people uh, uh, really like the, the imagery and the feeling in, in being connected to animals. There's a lot of information out there available to folks, like on, through the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association, through UVM Extension, to help you get that information. Uh, and one of the things I, I always say is, is when you're getting into agriculture, there are a lot of dumb mistakes you can make, but there's no reason that you have to make them because there are a lot of f folks around who are more than happy to share their information with you and. Sh share the things that work for them and the things that don't work for them. So I really- They've encourage already done it. They, they've already made those mm -hmm. dumb mistakes. <laughs> so, so why would you have to repeat that mistake? Yeah. That information is there uh, well, and people are just eager to share that's that That's where I'm you. gonna jump in and share that with our viewers to point out that they can get more information about small scale farming with the uh, Sheep and Goat Association. You can contact them at the address that we put on the, sh on the screen, vtsheepandgoat.org. Um, we also want to point out that you can, uh, we, we have on this w uh, particular screen, we have Dave's website, Settlement Farm at Comcast.net. But I also wanted to point out that at the Sheep and Goat Association, that's where you can also find uh, local products like the meat, milk, cheese, and wool. Uh, with that, I need to say thank you to our yep. guests, uh, Dave and Melissa. Thank you very much yep. for being with us yep. and hope to have you back again. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. That is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.